So another concept that we will start to see more of is factoring and also solving quadratics where a is 1. So we'll set up an equation using geometry like we have been doing, but then instead of being linear, they will be quadratics where we have two solutions, so we have to solve them differently. So this is just a review of how you did that in Algebra 1. In order to talk factoring, I do think it helps to first talk about multiplying because really factoring is the reverse of multiplication. We're trying to come up with what two factors would multiply to be that polynomial. So remembering that if we're multiplying two binomials like this where they each have two terms, we would use the FOIL method where you're multiplying the first outer, inner, and last. What you may not know because sometimes we hit that FOIL so hard that it is um, not as clear what you're actually doing. This FOIL is just distribution. All you're doing is distributing the x to both terms, the x and the negative 5, and then distributing the 3 to both terms. That's, that's all FOILing is. So we're saying we've got x times x, which is x squared. And we could do arrows if you want to, if that makes it clear. And um, x times negative 5. And then we have to distribute the 3. So you get a 3x and a negative 15. Okay. So notice that we end up with these terms in the middle. You probably remember that happening, where we can combine them to be a negative 2x. And then we've got our quadratic in the end when we've multiplied. So if we are going backwards, so if I started here, this is what factoring is going to do, is start here, and we're trying to come up with those two binomials that multiplied to be this. Notice that the negative 15, that didn't change at all. That was just what we got when we multiplied 3 and negative 5. And then negative 2 is the sum of negative 5 and 3. So that's why whenever we're factoring, we look for two numbers that multiply to be negative 15 and add to be a negative 2. That's where that comes from. Okay, so looking at factoring... Again, we're going to be looking for two numbers that multiply to be 12 and add to be a positive 7. The signs definitely give things away. If I'm multiplying to be a positive number, that means the numbers either have to both be positive or both be negative. They have the same sign. And then it's adding to be a positive number. So that means I'm looking for two positive numbers that multiply to be 12 and add to be 7. Some of these are much easier than others where you might think of it right away. If you don't, um, you may have already thought of this one, but if you don't, start going through all of the factors of 12. So we've got 1 and 12, 2 and 6, 3 and 4, and then think about, okay, of those factors, which ones would add to be 7, and of course, 3 and 4 add to be 7. So we've got an x plus 3, x plus 4. Those multiply to be 12, they add to be 7. If I did multiply them back through, I would end up with what I started with. So this is the factored form of that quadratic. Okay, so let's try another one. Here we're looking for two factors that multiply to be 16 and add to be negative 10. We do have a difference here where we've got adding to be a negative number, so that means that they both have to be negative because they're multiplying to be positive. But adding to be negative, I could go through the factors. Me too. 2 and 8. Mm, that's it. Um, 2 and 8 work, so we're, if they're both negative... Always double check, they multiply to be 16 and add to be a negative 10. Okay, and the one step up we'll go from that is solving. So it's just going to have one more step. I still am looking for two numbers. It does have to be set equal to 0, so we'll look at this last one. We will have to get it set equal to 0 first, but I always have to have it set equal to 0 if I'm solving by factoring. But then I'm still looking for two numbers that multiply to be negative 40 and add to be 6. So think about it here for a second. If you need to write out some factors, write out some factors. Okay. So hopefully we landed on a positive 10 and a negative 4. Those would multiply to be a negative 40 and 
add to be a positive 6. If you have your signs switched, that's why we check at the end, because if your signs were switched, they would combine to be a negative 6 instead of a positive 6. Okay, but then, so that, that was normal. We factored the last step since we are solving for x and not just factoring. Now I'm going to say, okay, if these two factors multiply to be 0, that means that one of the factors have to be 0. If I have two things multiplying to be 0, one of them is 0. So our last step is to say x plus 10 could be 0. Or x, plus, or x minus 4 could be 0, and then I'll solve each. So I've got x is a negative 10 and a positive 4. And now in geometry, for the purposes that we're using it for, typically one of these solutions won't make sense. We'll be dealing with angles or segments, and so at the end we'll plug in both of those values and see, okay, when I plugged in negative 10, it gave me negative 37 as an angle, and I can't have a negative angle measure, and so I'll take that one out. Or it's gonna make a segment have a negative length. Um, so we typically won't keep both answers, but it will have two answers initially. Okay, last one. Um, only difference here is that it wasn't set equal to zero, and I can't factor and solve if it's not set equal to zero because we had that whole situation where the two factors multiplied to be zero, so one of them had to be zero. I need that to be happening. So for this one, I am going to start by subtracting that 18 over. And you could have more things over here. Maybe you've got a 2x as well, and so you'd need to subtract that over and combine it with the negative 3x. Now we're looking for two numbers that multiply to be a negative 18 and add to be a negative 3. If you need to, pause it for a second, see if you can come up with those two numbers. So we should have a negative 6 and a positive 3. Multiply to be a negative 18, add to be a negative 3. And then our last step setting each of those equal to zero so that we can solve.